Today's class is going to focus on the idea of mudras, and this was a request uh, from a student. It's also a really good um, part of yoga that's we don't practice too often, but it's really a nice way to kind of expand your yoga knowledge. We use hand gestures all the time to communicate. You know, we wave to people, we give the peace sign, we give the okay sign. In yoga, we do Anjali Mudra, which is hands in prayer position in front of the heart. And if you've ever been to um, a house of worship, whether it's Christian or other traditions, particularly the Eastern traditions, if you look at the statues, they are frequently in mudra or hand positions. And you'll see there's a consistency throughout the different traditions. So in yoga, they're taught that um, by connecting certain fingers in certain ways, you can help to redirect your energy. So I'm just gonna mention a few right now, and we're gonna include a couple of them in our asana practice. Of course, we did talk about Anjali Mudra, which we begin and end with. We also start the sun salutation with that. The one that you also might be familiar with is something called the Gayan or Om Mudra. I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see my hands a little bit better. So that's connecting the thumb and the tip of the index finger. And you typically use this, um, this aids concentration and memory. You can place your palms up on your thighs when you do this or place them down, which is more grounding. And then there's the Bodhi Mudra, which is a very calming, very centering. And that's the thumb touching the pinky finger and the other three fingers extended. Okay, so if you need a little dose of calm and focus, you can use these. And you can see how there would be times in your practice, particularly during meditation, when these might be helpful. What the position I like for meditation is something called the Diana or the Chalice Mudra. And that one is done, I'm gonna stand so you can see it, the right hand is on the top, the left hand is on the bottom, and the thumbs touch. And when you're seated, the palms face up and the edge of the hands rest lightly on the lower belly. The shoulders are relaxed. So you might wanna try that one when we're doing our closing meditation. And um, last but not least, and this is not an extensive list, uh, is the prana mudra, which if you want to stimulate some energy, it's touching the tip of the thumb to the pinky and the ring finger, and the other two fingers are extended. And we'll use this mudra while we're doing our Pilates 100. So hopefully that'll get a little more energy going. I wanted to share with you, this is a book um, that I've had. It's called Mudra, Yoga in Your Hands. And uh, Giovanni, if while I'm teaching, maybe you could look this one up on Amazon and put a link up there for people who are interested. It explains in great detail all the different mudras, how to use them, what they're good for, uh, ways they might be useful in your practice, whether it's a complete yoga practice or whether you're just doing a meditation practice. So with that, let's begin. Coming to a, a comfortable seated position, I'm gonna place my hands in the chalice mudra. So the right hand is on top of the left, the thumbs are touching, and I feel as if my belly is kind of resting in my open palms, shoulders are relaxed allowing your eyes to close and connecting with the breath. Beginning by simply feeling yourself land in this moment. Your body, your mind, your heart, your energy all together.
and noticing whatever it is that draws your attention this morning, whether it's a sensation in your body, an emotion, a thought. And then just redirecting that attention back towards the breath. Allowing the breath to expand into the three-part breath. Beginning the breath down in the belly, drawing it upward through the chest to your shoulders, and exhaling from the top down, shoulders, chest, and belly. At the end of the exhale, even draw the belly back towards the spine just a little. And if your thoughts should pull you away, which they probably will, gently come back to your breath. Take three more complete breaths. At the end of that third exhale, release the technique so your natural breath comes back. Take a moment to observe how you're feeling. And we'll bring our centering to close by bringing hands to Anjali Mudra in front of the heart and joining our voices in an Om. Deep breath in. Oh. Om Shanti, peace. May we all know peace. So we'll begin with the six movements of the spine. Breathing in, allowing the chest to come forward, head looks up, shoulders back. And then exhaling, rounding your spine, pushing your back towards the back of the chair, tuck your chin creating waves of breath, imagining that the vertebrae in your back are like beads on a chain. And what would it feel like if you could move each one individually? So encouraging this movement to be as fluid as you can. Breathing in and breathing out. Couple more times, breath in and breath out. Back to center, getting ready for the twist. Right arm extends. Bring that palm to your left knee, left hand to the side of your chair. And we lengthen with each breath we take in and begin to twist each time we exhale. So I'm gonna cross my left leg over the right. This is an option, you don't need to do this. Just a suggestion. Allowing your spine to be nice and straight, shoulders relaxed, breath nice and steady. Once more, breathing in and letting it go. Good. Come back to center. Go directly to the other side, left arm stretches out, palm comes to the knee, right hand to the side of your chair. And after you've settled in, if you want to add the leg cross, now is the chance to do that.
one more breath in and let it go. Bring yourself back around. Ready for thread the needle? We'll start with the right side. So energizing that arm as you reach the fingertips away from the shoulders, slide that arm along, easing yourself forward. Remember, even if you can only come a little further forward, that's fine. I'm gonna add an arm sweep with my left arm. A nice deep rotation. One more breath. And as you exhale, guide yourself back and go to the other side. Left arm stretches out, slides along. And always remember that the two sides could be very different in what you are able to do. Good, and inhale, bring it back up and take a breath. Good. So we'll start with some leg extensions. Um, hopefully you have a yoga tie with you if you need it. We're gonna start with the right foot. So you can hook the tie around the sole of your foot if you need it for assistance, or you can just lift and lower the leg. So we're gonna breathe in, lift the foot, exhale, bring it down. Inhale, lift it up and exhale, bring it down. So as you lift the foot, make sure you're not leaning back in your chair. Let's do a couple more of those. And then I'm gonna leave the leg extended. If your leg gets tired, you can always hold on with the tie or just interlace your fingers behind the thigh. Let's point the toe. Press out through the heel, point and press. Circle that ankle. Make sure you go both ways, please. So I'm gonna draw that leg across the chest. So if you're able to reach your toe and stretch the leg across, that's one option. The other option is to use your tie and draw the leg across. Make sure you're sitting up straight Create a fist with your right hand. Begin to massage your thigh, upper buttocks. Make sure you get around to the front and the back. And I'm gonna rub with my knuckles on those big muscles because they like it. Great. So let's go into the figure four stretch. Crossing at the ankles, at the knees, or allowing the foot to rest on top of the thigh. Again, you wanna make sure you're sitting up nice and straight, pressing down on the knee, up on the foot, just to read the right level of sensation, leaning forward to intensify. Nice, steady breath. Good, one more breath here. And then the next time you breathe in, bring yourself up. So with your foot still in position for the figure four stretch, whether you're crossed at the ankles, the knee, or as I am, we're gonna include another mudra that I didn't explain in the beginning, but it's called the Ganesha mudra. And Ganesha in Hindu mythology is the, uh, the god that removes obstacles and make sure that your life plan unfolds the way it should. So he's a good one to call on. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the left hand and put it in front of your chest, palm facing forward. Then you're going to take your right hand and interlace the fingers and pull the hands apart so there's tension in the shoulders. Good. Breathe in. 
Hold that tension, rotate to the right. Remember, we're removing obstacles here, so you might want to think about, breathe it back to center, and to the left. Think about something in your life where you feel a little stuck. And just pull on those fingers and say, Ganesha, Ganesha, get rid of that obstacle. Back to center and one more. Pulling on the fingers, release the hands, release the foot. And we'll go to the other side. So we'll start with the leg extensions. Again, hooking the yoga tie around your foot if you like or, um, or not, whatever you feel comfortable. I'm going to lift the foot and lower it down. The breath in creates the lift and the exhale lowers the foot. Breathing in and breathing out. It's hard to worry about anything when you're so focused on what you're doing. Breathing in and breathing out. So we're gonna lift the foot this time. Keep the leg extended. Make sure you're still sitting up tall. Point your toe. Press out through your heel. Just rocking the foot back and forth a few times. And we'll circle the ankle. One way and then the other. Good. So we're gonna get ready to draw the foot across the body. Remember, you can use your yoga tie here, or if you're able to reach your foot, you can just stretch it across. Make a fist with your left hand and do a little massage. Chilly out there this morning. Want to get the blood circulating. Burn up your internal furnace. I'm going to rub with the knuckles here. All right, so let's come into the figure four stretch at whatever position works for your body. I'm gonna make sure, I was rock a little bit just to make sure both of my sit bones are equally square on the chair. So I'm not leaning to one side. Sitting up tall, downward on the knee, upward on the foot. And for more intensity, lean into it. Make sure your head is nice and relaxed. Don't try to hold your head up. Great, and inhale, let's come up. Beautiful, ready for the Ganesha Mudra? Again, left palm in front of your heart, palm facing forward. Right hand on top, interlace the fingers, pull the hands apart. Good, breathe in, let's rotate to the right. Breathe it back to center, exhale to the left, guide it back, twist. Your sit bones should still be on the chair. And to the left and back. And again, one more gentle pull on the fingers. Release that, uncross your leg. So all those obstacles are now gone. Wouldn't that be a great thing? So let's breathe the arms up. Interlace your fingers, press the palms up towards the ceiling and just rock from side to side. So as you're rocking, you don't want to come over so far that your sit bones lift off the chair. You want to stay nice and square. That'll put the stretch just where it needs to be. So we're going to go over to the right now and see if you can press the hands away a little further. Nice stretch in the side body. Great. Inhale, guide it back to center. Breathe in and reach to the left. Again, sit bones, nice and square on the chair. 
not rolling forward or back, just directly to the side. So it might be a pretty small movement and that's just fine. Inhale, bring it back to center. Press your palms up towards the ceiling one more time and then release the hands. Allow them to float down. Take a breath. Sun salutations. Beginning in Anjali Mudra, feet flat on the floor. Ground yourself from the soles of your feet all the way up to the top of your head. Breathe in, arms sweep up. Exhale as you reach back. Breathe it back to mountain and then open your arms. Fold forward, let the breath go. Palms to the knees, come up halfway. Exhale and fold. Inhale, arms sweep up. Let's reach it back. Breathe it back to mountain and back to your heart. Let's do one more of those. Inhale. And on an exhale, reach back. Think about lengthening. Good, come back to center and fold forward, letting the breath go. Palms to knees as you breathe in. Exhale and fold completely. Inhale, arms sweep up. Let's reach it back. Breathe it back to mountain. And exhale right back to your heart. And take a pause here. Just pause, and breathe. Since yoga and yoga with mudra is all about moving energy, let's generate a little more energy. We're gonna pull some prana in, and then we're gonna send it back out into the universe. So letting your spine round, reaching forward as if you're grabbing a handful of that life force and then pull it right into your center with a ha. Good, reach it forward. Exhale, ha. Breathe in, out, ha. Ha. You could either go a little faster or a little slower than I am. It's perfectly fine. Ha. So you're actually rolling off your sit bones, very much like the movement that we do with cat and dog. A <sighs> couple more times here. Ooh, I feel energized already. <sighs> now we have all that energy in, we're gonna send it out. We're gonna send it out with a punch and then pull it in, send it out and pull it in. And we're gonna do it. Each time we do that, there's going to be an exhale. So here we go. Ha. <sighs> Ha, 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 ha. Couple more times. Ha, ha, ha. Reach your arms up. Reach, 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 reach. And then exhale, forward fold. Let it go. Relax your head, relax your neck. Hands to the hips, engaging your core. And let's come all the way up to seated. We're gonna do our Pilates 100 now. And I thought we would experiment with using the Prana Mudra, the energy mudra, where we connect the thumb with these two fingers. So in other words, the pinky finger and the ring finger and the other two fingers are extended, all right? So with Pilates 100, the legs are extended, heels can be on the floor, or you could pick the feet up. Arms are extended and we're gonna pump four times in and four times out, leaving the hands in the mudra position, if it's comfortable for you. Here we go. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Little sips of breath and blow it out. And in, two, three, four, out, 
two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Get that energy working. And blow it out. Take it in and let it go. If you get tired, you can always put your heels down. One more set. Inhale, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and pause. Engage your core, pull your chest forward a little bit. Great, release your mudra, lower your hands. Feet on the floor, forward bend to release your abdominal muscles. <sighs> So coming up to seated by either walking your hands up the legs or engaging your core and hinging up. All right, so let's come up to standing. And we talk about um, fall prevention a lot and how it's linked with yoga. And one of the things that's really important is the flexibility piece, the flexibility in the hips, in the knees, shoulders, the feet. So I always like to do some hip circles. So I'm keeping my knees very soft here. I'm gonna move my chair back a little bit. You wanna have a comfortable stance and the knees are soft. So take your time, there's no rush. So you're guiding your hips to the side, forward, to the other side, back. Let's do one more in this direction. And then let's go in the other direction. Then we're gonna get a little fancy. Hi Suki, how are you? I guess doggy nap time is over. So letting that pause, now we're going to do, see if you can think about what it would feel like to draw a figure eight with your hips. So let's try that. Knees have gotta be soft in order to do this. Feet are relaxed, shoulders are relaxed. Okay, you remember which way you're going? Good, so let's switch it up and go the other way. So every time you do a movement like this in a non-dominant way, your brain gets a workout, just in addition to your body. Nice and smooth. Again, think about your spine like a string of beads. You want it to move independently. and then bring that back to stillness, good. So we're gonna do chair pose from the standing position. Usually we come into chair pose from seated and stand into it, but this time we're gonna start standing and drop down. So if you need to, feel free to hold on to the chair, either alongside the chair or in the back of the chair. It's fine, either way. I'm gonna leave my hands on my hips to begin. Make sure your feet are about hip width apart. Good, take a breath in and come into a partial squat. So the thighs stay parallel, you're breathing. You may add the arms if you like for a little bit more intense practice. Great, lower the hands. Straighten your legs. Take a minute to notice where the work is going on in your body. Good. So if you're not already standing on the, um, towards the left side of your chair, why don't you come on over? Shift your weight to your right foot and begin to lift the left knee. Again, a yoga tie can be used behind the thigh if you like, or you can just hang on to the knee.
Make sure you're breathing. If you want to circle that ankle a few more times, that's fine. Good. And we're going to move directly into warrior pose from here. So take a deep breath in, take that left foot and step it back. Square your hips, a little bit of bend in that right knee. Add the arms if you like, one arm or both. And breathe. Think about sending the exhale out through the sole of your feet. Send it right down into the earth. Wonderful. Let's move into warrior two. So I'm going to lower my arms and take the left arm behind you, right arm forward. Again, forward. You're bending a little forward in that right knee. Great, one more breath. Lower your arms, step your feet together, and then step them apart. Good. So we're gonna come into five pointed star, sweeping one arm out, releasing the chair if you don't need it for balance. Again, send the exhale out through the soles of your feet, reach your hands away from one another, opposite directions. Let's drop down into goddess pose. So elbows bends. If you want, you can create that prana mudra by touching the thumb to the pinky and the ring finger, coming down into a squat. Or if this doesn't appeal to you, you just wanna make an old peace sign for the peaceful warrior, you can do that too. Let's take one more deep breath. Release the arms, straighten the legs, and step your feet together. Take a breath. Moving to the other side. So the weight comes to my left foot. Let your gaze be steady, let your breath be steady. See if you can feel the whole sole of your supporting foot. Flatten that foot out. And we'll move it into warrior. So I'm gonna take that right foot and step it back. Square the hips. Bend in the left knee. Again, adding the arms, you can always keep one hand on the chair. Not a problem. Let your breath come directly from your belly, just like that three-part breath we do in the beginning. Warrior two, here we go. Right arm sweeps back, left arm sweeps forward, and we stretch. Gaze is out over the left hand. Good, lower down. Step your feet together and step them apart. Five-pointed star. Take a minute to really press your feet down. If you're curling your toes, flatten them out and press them down. One arm or both sweep out from the shoulders. Strong exhale. Getting ready for goddess, also called peaceful warrior. Create a bend in the knees if you want to form the mudra. The prana mudra, elbows out from the shoulders, or like I said, you can just do the peace sign. 
and breathe. Great, one more breath in, straighten the legs, release the arms, step your feet together, take a breath. Notice how you feel. And let's finish up our practice with a downward facing dog. So you can be standing at the back of your chair or you can just bring your hands to the seat of the chair. I'm gonna do that because I want a little deeper stretch. I'm gonna walk my feet back, knees are soft, if your hamstrings are still tight, you can just bend and straighten one knee at a time. Feels very good. Take a breath in. And on the exhale, guide yourself back to your chair and take a seat. So we're gonna have our final sit and meditation. And you can um, join me in forming the chalice mudra with one palm resting on top of the other, thumbs touching. Or if you wanna form the om mudra with the thumb and the pointer finger touching. Other three fingers are extended. Palms can be up on your thighs or down. If you have your palms up, it's more a gesture of receiving. If you have your palms down, it's more a sensation of grounding. So whatever it is you might be needing today, whether you're needing to receive some gift, or whether you're needing to ground yourself in the moment, or whether you'd like to just join me in chalice mudra, that's fine. Allow your shoulders to soften and your eyes to close. Taking just a few moments to notice what has changed for you during your practice, whether it's your energy, your emotions, sensations in your body. We're all always a work in progress. keeping your attention focused on your breathing. And if it's hard to stay focused on the breath, just allow yourself to let the attention rest wherever you feel the strongest sensation of breath in your body. Sometimes that helps. bringing your attention back as often as you need to, as you sit. And then allowing your breath to deepen and beginning to rejoin the world around you with some stretches. Do whatever you like to do here. <sighs> Bringing your hands to Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. Let's join our voices in an ohm. 
Om. Om Shanti, peace. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from fear. And may all beings everywhere know peace. Namaste.